Hello everyone and welcome to the Belt and Road Face to Face. Clean energy, uh, in the long run we see it, it, is, it has lower cost and it is better for the environment. The, the solar power and the wind power projects from China's cooperation uh, with Pakistan are very clean. The government must have the determination to solve many practical problems. The waste of time also adds up to the cost because time is equal to money. Alternative and renewable energy sector will be developing very fast. Hello everyone and welcome to the Belt and Road Face to Face. Our program is co-produced by China Economic Net and Vashti News Television. And I'm Zun Khan from China Economic Net and today I'm pleased to be joined in our studio by Zhou Yuan, who is head of Urdu department at the Beijing Foreign Studies University in Beijing. And we also have with us Mr. Kamran Rasool from Pakistan, who is quality manager at Volkswagen in China. Welcome to both of you. Let's begin the first part of our program, Hotspot. The government formally announced the Alternative and Renewable Energy, also known as the ARE Policy 2020, that offers tax facilities to investors and promises the induction of power plants on open competitive bidding for lowest tariff and technology transfer. The target is to increase the share of ARE in total power supply to 20% by 2025 and 30% by 2030, from about 5% at present. Import of equipment, machinery and manufacturing material would be exempted from customs duty or import duties, and investments would be exempt from income tax, and only withholding tax on dividends would be applicable. Wind and solar tariff had already come down to 4 to 4.5 cents per unit and hoped it would go down 3.5 cents per unit after bidding. In recent years, Pakistan has attached great importance to the new energy fields. Mr. Kamran, let's start with you first. Uh, what is the current situation of Pakistan? Uh, the, the dams that we have uh, are not enough to produce the uh, or meet the requirements of uh, power and electricity across the country. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> especially in the Sindh and the Punjab regions and uh, we know the remote villages or the regions are even out of the question. So um, Pakistan has realized and the Pakistani government had taken the right steps uh, to come up with this uh, policy uh, for the renewable energy inviting the investors um, in terms of uh, you know the, uh, the, the technology transfer. So I think this would be a very lucrative uh, opportunity for the Chinese investors to look at this, uh, you know, uh, wonderful opportunity in Pakistan to introduce uh, many different other forms of technology, such as uh, the solar technology and, and so on. Is it cost effective? Definitely, it's very cost effective. Running some businesses out of the solar energy uh, in the remote areas where there is not possibility of, uh, you know, having of uh, having the uh, power lines or the grid uh, for those areas where there are, uh, let's say, um, some farms or you know. Uh, the um, you know the the processing of uh, different sort of uh, uh, fertilizers and so on. Uh, these uh, these uh, renewable energy can be very useful uh, at the smaller scale uh, in those villages and so on. Professor Joe, we know that at the beginning when CPEC was envisioned, this was not the priority sector, but it's in 2018 that renewable energy is being prioritized. So can you give an idea where Pakistan stands? Why should we be modernizing? As we know that Pakistan's energy sector is vitally important for the country's economic growth. And here I have a few figures according to the National Electric Power Regulatory Authority's annual report for last year. Pakistan's total installed power generation capacity is 39,000 megawatt. And among this, 66% of energy comes from uh, thermal while 42% um, hydro and 6% uh, from the renewable energy. And actually, I think Pakistan e itself, it is re rich in clean energies, but it just needs to be developed. And uh, this great potential uh, needs to be uh, developed with the modernized uh, uh, 
uh, technologies because I think clean energy uh, in the long run we see it it is it has lower cost and it is better for the environment so uh, as Mr. Kamara mentioned that China can invest in this field and China is already doing a lot of work here in this field especially let's say in uh, hydropower and also uh, wind power and solar power uh, etc these fields China has done a lot of uh, projects and many projects under CPAC have already been uh, pro uh, finished and some new projects are being constructed so we believe that in the coming future this alternative and renewable energy sector will be developing very fast. I think this was also the focus of the second Belt and Road Forum. So, but Kamran, there, there are some people that say that CPEC isn't green. What's your own opinion on this? There, is a, there are a lot of controversial comments because I see CPEC is a very pivotal and vital uh, for Pakistan's growth and also uh, very important for China as well. Uh, with regards to the whole Belt and Road uh, chain of projects. Uh, but CPEC itself has a lot of projects that are going to uh, put Pakistan among the developed countries when the CPEC is entirely realized. Uh, you just mentioned that you know many households now, uh, thanks to China, are uh, able to use the uh, solar panels. Solar panels are 100% clean energy. And uh, why? Because in the past, those households that did not, did not have the solar panels were actually relying on, uh, you know, like the generator powered, uh, generator powered uh, as a backup. So, which, would, which is definitely not green uh, and also not clean because to power the diesel. generator, you would need diesel uh, or, or gasoline to burn and I don't consider it as a, as a clean alternative at all. Yeah. So the, the solar power and the wind power projects from China's cooperation uh, with Pakistan are very clean and uh, we, it puts it into, into the uh, you know, progressive trajectory uh, as a nation if we, if we take CPEC as a, as a positive step. If anybody questions like uh, why the implementations of uh, you know, uh, the clean energy in Pakistan seems to be too slow. Yeah. I would just say that it's because uh, the you know uh, it takes time. These are what we are talking about is a, is a big reform. So the first step is to announce the right policy. So I think the government has taken the uh, very good positive steps towards improving the overall economy and also the you know the opportunities for different sectors in Pakistan. At the same time, improving uh, the lifestyle because currently. Uh, you know, whenever there, uh, there is a shortage of, uh, uh, you know, the electricity or the load shedding happens in Pakistan, it really puts the, uh, you know, all the businesses at halt. And that this really also, uh, you know, um, makes uh, investor, investors coming to Pakistan are first very frustrated because they think that if they are coming to a country where they might have to face this uh, power outage, may not be very good for their business. But also at the same time, the the general public also suffer when they have four to five hours. How can of, they be in a good mood? Yes. How can they work a hundred percent? So this is uh, one of the basic yeah. need to energize the economy. Yeah. Uh, so I really appreciate the steps taken by the Pakistan government. However, the implementation takes time, and gradually we will see the good results. Professor Cho, uh, we have obviously seen that uh, both countries have the intention and also the ability to cooperate effectively. Uh, but obviously there are certain sectors where Pakistan can improve a lot. We have certain ideas, but the implementation may see some hurdles. Uh, on the other hand, I feel like China has overcome many such issues over the years. Uh, can you give us an idea how Pakistan can further uh, increase the ability to implement ideas such as the one we're discussing? Well, I think first uh, the government uh, should keep the continuity of their policies. I mean, no matter uh, which party comes to the government, and we need to uh, keep these policies going on. Uh, if, for example, if we already signed a contract with China's which group to build this hydropower mm -hmm. station, then no matter which government is there, we need to keep it moving. And also the government must 
have the determination to solve many practical problems. Mm. Uh, for example, if you plan to build a, like a, let's say a hydropower station in which rural area and you need to relocate the local citizens to another place and to arrange not only compensate them with money but you need to arrange their future jobs and also their uh, living places. So all these problems can be if we do not tackle them well, there can be some obstacles, right? But in China, uh, for huge uh, projects, every time when it happens, the local government made a lot of efforts in these real uh, practical uh, factors. Uh, managing conflicts like these uh, could cost a lot. If, we, if there is a conflict when the government changes, and if there is a conflict of interest, and at, at, at the price of these projects, which are huge, I would say these are like mega projects that involve a lot of resources and investments on China's part and Pakistan part both. The waste of time also adds up to the cost because time is equal to money. So I fully agree that the government, uh, whichever party comes in, uh, in into the uh, you know authority, should be able to realize that it has to be continued because it all turns out to be in favor of Pakistan. With that, we will close the first segment of our program. The numbers of the smallholder farmers is increasing because the land uh, uh, dividing generation by generation. So we should be paying much more attention as compared to China uh, and then maybe at some point in the future we will be able to substitute human effort or human labors with the machinery but I don't see this happening in the in the very short term. What do they do is that they find out uh, the local areas uh, special uh, agricultural products and then deep process it. You're watching the Belt and Road face to face and we're about to start the second part of our program, Figure. A comprehensive structural reforms oriented agricultural growth strategy for the next seven years was proposed by the subcommittee of the National Assembly Special Committee on Agricultural Products. It aimed at accelerating agricultural growth by up to 5% per annum in a sustainable manner. The conveners of the commission made a model envisions a pro-poor growth strategy focusing on the transformation of the business reforms model oriented of the agricultural growth strategy for the next seven years was proposed by the subcommittee of the National Assembly of the Total Special Committee on Agricultural Products. What is the current agricultural model of Pakistan? Everybody does in their own way and that is also the reason why we are not able to really uh, meet the uh, or, or be able to uh, capture the needs of the uh, you know the global market. So I would say that the, one of the best way is to empower uh, the, uh, the the farmers and you know st start improvement from the from the ground. It means like from the lowest uh, level, which would be empowering the farmers and lift them up from uh, being able to cultivate not only the 48 percent but a higher amount, like maybe double it up at to at least. Uh, 80 plus percentage because when you empower the farmer and the and the you know the lower class of the team uh, you give them the ability to uh, you know um, let them be able to send their kids to the school within their own villages so it's just related that everything is like connected you know so if their lands are uh, you know producing double than uh, as compared with the previous years that means they're generating more revenue and they're making more money unless we empower the lower class of the the, the workers that are really driving this agriculture industry and give them uh, the necessary education and training mm. we are not going to be able to standardize or you know have uh, have a sustainable development in the agriculture area do you think professor joe that um, it took uh, some reform, some it, it was a painful process for China to really modernize and empower the farmers. Well, uh, China is a huge country and I think the situation in different areas are not that 
balanced. Okay. Uh, also, we cannot say everywhere, uh, every China's rural area is as developed as that in Jiangsu or Guangdong province. But generally speaking, China's government has put a lot of efforts in modernizing our agriculture, our agricultural mode, especially uh, efforts on improving the farmers' incomes because we consider is, this is vitally important to the agricultural sector. Yeah. So my experience is that uh, you have, since you have mentioned the smallholder farmers, right? Uh, this is also, this was, or this is currently the situation in China as well, since China also have a lot of these small farmers we call it. Uh, also in Pakistan, uh, as we know that the numbers of the smallholder farmers is increasing because the land uh, di uh, dividing generation by generation. So in Pakistan, there are a lot of farmers who only owns like let's say four acre field. Mm -hmm. This is not good for the sustainability of this uh, the farming because if you just cultivate your own land uh, within this very limited area you don't need machinery to do it right yeah. you you still keep it keep farming it in a very primitive way or traditional way this is the oldest way of farming it has very low per acre yield right mm. and this will affect the farmers uh, incomes of course but in china we have um, very good experience in uh, many areas like in uh, Jiangsu, uh, I know that they are trying to divide the this uh, ownership of the land and the, the management rights mm -hmm. of this land. But look, okay. uh, it's, it means that uh, I own this area of land, but I uh, the ownership be belongs to me, right? But I don't uh, farm it by myself. Like big enterprises, the shareholders yeah, and the management. Yeah, there is a community. We all transfer yeah. our th this management thing to a uh, certain community. So this community owns a big area of land, and then we can use very modern machinery yeah. to farm it and to harvest, and then the profits would be divided according to your land yeah. area. Area. So in this way, the very modern uh, farming machines can be used here and the yield, the productivity and the profitability both are improving. So the farmers' incomes are also improving. And what about those people who, who are supposed to be work in the farms? So those people can go to the village and town entrepreneurs. Okay. We have a lot of uh, this kind of entrepreneurs in the town mm -hmm. and uh, what do they do is that they find out uh, the local areas uh, special uh, agricultural products and then deep process it. Uh, Professor Joe mentioned that it is uh, you know uh, relevant to the town or, or the community mm -hmm. and you can see uh, that every a small village or every city have their own local government representatives mm -hmm. and uh, you know the as the Chinese government have always have a Wuni and Jihua uh, but it's not related to that Wuni and Jihua but I'm just saying that uh, the, uh, the the central government makes the decision about empowering or improving the lives of the lower class at the same time every time they release their uh, plan for the five years but then it drills down and uh, narrows down to each town each village and each uh, you know the mayor the local mayor or the local Nazim. yeah Nazim they have the responsibilities to improve uh, their own community their own towns um, in, in some places you might see some development happening in Pakistan and you see some good examples coming out like what uh, Professor Joe has mentioned there must be one or two villages that that uh, doing the similar thing in Pakistan but that won't be visible and it will not be adopted uh, so uh, what so what is the solution yeah the solution is to uh, basically you know give the subsidies uh, give the importance uh, from the very beginning or uh, you know this needs to be pushed forward because why I say that you know it is uh, in China farmers are considered very important we need to first realize that we are an agricultural country 
uh, we are not even as close to China when it comes to development of technologies. So we should be paying much more attention as compared to China uh, and then maybe at some point in the future we will be able to substitute human effort or human labors with the machinery, but I don't see this happening in the, in the very short term. Professor Joe, mm. do you think uh, this is morbid or it's a very realistic view and it helps us actually find solutions instead of being idealistic? Well, uh, I think uh, Pakistan and China have different situations, of course, and I totally agree. Pakistan cannot jump from the traditional way to any other country's experience or model. Mm, but for, uh, for Pakistan, what is vital important is that in the government and the farmers must realize that the traditional way of farming, harvesting this agriculture cannot be really mm. sustainable. The mode must be mm. modernized, uh, both the way of their farming and uh, their connection with the market. Uh, I think also the farmer's education, the farmer's access to finance, yes. uh, and their awareness of this sustainable uh, agriculture must be uh, you know, raised. I think all the efforts the government should uh, make yeah. immediately. If you talk about the machinery for farming or the equipment that could be needed um, for the smallholders or farmers, uh, it has to be available at a very good financial terms, maybe even without any interest if possible, because when we talk about empowering uh, farmers, we really need to uh, live up to the expectations of the farmers and not just burden them. With that, we close the second segment of our program. China, if we invite people uh, to eat uh, whether in the, uh, at our homes or in the restaurants, if I am the host, uh, if there is nothing left, that means I didn't serve you well. The government has the pressure to make money and the government only makes money through the taxes. So then why not change the bad habits to the good habits and if people are having, continuing to have bad habits, then give them the penalties. Swipe their card in order to make the gap uh, can to open. Okay. And in the card, that will record your personal information. You're watching the Belt and Road face to face and we're about to enter the third part of our program, culture. Recently, the most searched hashtag on Weibo Big Eater live streaming is criticized for serious waste, aroused heated discussion among netizens. In recent years, the fierce market competition has made the big stomach king style of eating show going in the wrong direction. When many bloggers record videos, they first force themselves to eat a lot of food and then use the time of the break to forcibly vomit and spit out the food they eat. According to the report on food waste in Chinese cities, the amount of food wasted in China is about 17 million to 18 million tons per year, equivalent to 30 million to 50 million people's annual rations. Recently, Chinese President Xi Jinping also issued important instructions on curbing food waste, stressing the need to take effective measures and to establish a long-term mechanism to resolutely stop wastage of so food waste is a global phenomenon in pakistan like have you been conscious of this or do you think people should be more aware definitely uh, i would first of all start off by saying that that i salute the uh, you know the the netizens first the recognition uh, of this issue uh, from the president of uh, china yeah. uh, xi jinping that it is it is really uh, a wonderful uh, thing that they, that you know being a president he's addressing on this issue uh, although you know normally you wouldn't hear or uh, see something like this uh, you know just imagine the situations like covid-19 uh, that took place or the locust uh, attacks it really put people's at uh, at the you know in a very difficult situations where a lot of harvest was not uh, you know, uh, making uh, to the market in a timely manner. Uh, imagine uh, a situation where if we have to ever face a drought or a shortage of water, because currently the earth has only 3% of drinkable or usable water. 
in this entire planet Earth. The 97th of it, percentage of it is, is, is the salty water. So all of our harvest and crops and everything that we grow, whether it is uh, vegetable fruits or, or meat, uh, it all depends on water. So water is very important. We shouldn't be wasting water. It's part of the food. And uh, whether we are showering or, or whether we are uh, you know, using water for cleaning or whatever, we should always be careful and cautious about it. Same applies to the food and, and from our own, uh, you know, the background of the religious teachings and, and uh, the, uh, the religion also, it tells us that never to waste the food. In every, uh, you know, uh, religion, no matter whatever faith you belong to, it's pretty much the same. So I really appreciate the Not president of China that issue. he has pointed it out. So definitely the, the ones who follow uh, and mm. love the leadership of uh, President Xi would at least notice. Is it that really with time, with the abundance of wealth and the abundance of affordability, uh, people don't care anymore? Frankly speaking, I think in this way, uh, Pakistani people are doing better than we Chinese. Because whenever I was in Pakistan or in China, when I, whenever I eat with my Pakistani friends, I have never seen anyone waste any food. They just eat up all their meals. Professor Joe, I don't know if you were ever invited to a wedding ceremony. Oh in yeah, Pakistan. this is what I'm gonna say. But uh, you know, but in uh, some weddings or some banquets, uh, it is estimated that by uh, Pakistan's uh, report that about uh, 15 to 20 percent of the food at the banquet uh, is wasted, wasted, which is yes. not given. I mean, that's not very high. In China, if we invite people. Uh, to eat uh, whether in the uh, at our homes or in the restaurants if I am the host uh, If there is nothing left that means I didn't serve you well the, Actually, this kind of culture is very horrible because mm. there must be some leftovers yes. kept yeah. there and nobody is you know We are very shy to pack them to our own home if uh, all the people are eating together, you know, so mm. how do we process these leftovers even in some big hotels and restaurants right every day they have many leftovers maybe seven eight years ago and i was i was in touch with some ngos in lahore and islamabad for example that uh, would get the food leftover food from restaurants and distribute it uh, among homeless communities mm -hmm. so uh, these ngos i mean they made that effort because it's much easier for them to just throw the food and actually they can't give away the food otherwise no one would buy their food so the only way instead of throwing it would be to be officially recognized as a hygienic um, food provider uh, good enough for people to consume and then they they can say okay every leftover of the day we will uh, pledge that to these homeless communities mm -hmm. so this could be one way maybe there are some ways where government can really show what government I guess means government what uh, can government do for example mm -hmm. government put taxes on everything that we buy you can never buy anything without taxes unless you're buying something yes. out of duty-free shop right so um, this could just be thought out like especially if you go to the restaurants and you have to pay for the food right there should be additional tax for those people who are leaving uh, food in the plates. 20 years ago, in, in big cities in Pakistan, it was okay to throw your wrapper on the street and nobody would judge. Now people judge that. Why? Because children in schools are taught this is unacceptable. And when you teach children in schools in China and in Pakistan that it is unacceptable to waste food, their parents will feel ashamed. I fully agree. This is a oh. one very good way. And this is the education that I got from my parents never to waste the food. So I make sure that I don't waste it. Yeah. But then uh, how do you ensure it on a, on a country level or on a, on a major level for Pakistan? Obviously, uh, Professor Joe has mentioned that Pakistan is doing better. But uh, if you are comparing Pakistan with China and saying that Pakistan is doing better, I'm still not satisfied. I think Pakistan should do much more better than that because look at the size of China, the, the affordability uh, of, of the consumers, right? Yeah. So if Pakistan, imagine if Pakistan had that uh, affordability and uh, uh, from the consumer's capacity side, that would Pakistan be, be doing, still be doing better? They I've just, seen people feel pride in yeah, wasting they, they, food. They, they feel prou just... proud about wasting this and showing yeah. 
going yeah. off. So this mentality has to change. Mm -hmm. And some people can be changed by their teaching from the school or from the family, but some people can be taught by, you know, putting some taxes on them. I remember once I was in Netherlands that when people throw the uh, ga ga garbages, right? Yeah. Um, they need to swipe their card in order to make the garbage uh, can to open. See? And in the card, that will record your personal information. You know, mm -hmm. if you put some uh, thing wrong, yeah, things wrong, or you put your uh, uh, kind of new clothes inside, then that that, that dustbin can record that who has thrown what into that. Then. You know, you will be found by the local, even the, the, some officers. On one side, we make a suggestion or we just think, uh, you know, uh, within our limited capacity. And one of the ideas is to give subsidies to the farmers and lower, the, lower down the taxes for them. And definitely, I'm sure nobody else realizes the value of the food as those farmers because they are growing the, those food for them. Those tomatoes are like their babies. Government has the pressure. Government has the pressure to make money. And the government only makes money through the taxes. So then why not change the bad habits to the good habits? And if people are having continuing to have bad habits, then give them the penalties or the points. So for example, if I am drunk driving, the police will not let me do it continuously, right? For sure, there's no way to make sure people are good. Like people just need incentives, push and pull Nobody is good together. and bad, but we just need similar kind of behavior from a society. And despite whatever limitations we have, I think the first thing which was amazing that President Xi did that was state it. This is not okay. And people really, some people don't know that it's not okay to waste food what is it to waste food? Just create a culture out of it first. And then, of course, I think once this is in part of people's consciousness, they can do something about it. Thank you once again. Thank you for watching. Until next time.